It's High Noon with David. He's gone and fallen in love with Jesus and bringing boldness to the body of Christ. Here's David. Hi. Welcome to High Noon with David. This is show number 264. Here to bring you a gift. Here to bring you the gift of boldness. Boldness for what? Boldness to believe. I'm talking to two of you. Those of you that are about to become believers. And number two, those of you that already are and you're hungry for more. Uh, <clears throat> I wrote it out years ago. This is my 42nd year of being in the ministry. Or I should say following Jesus. I think I kind of got out of the ministry so I could be in the ministry because the religious side of it really stinks. It stinks so bad. You know, as one Pentecostal church said, look, we got the pastor saw some five Baptists visiting and uh, <clears throat> sitting on the back and they said, we need to calm down. We got five Baptists here tonight. And so they just watered down the service and calmed down from all the shouting and praising the Lord and running and doing the crazy things. And and when the service was over, the Baptist came up to the pastor and, and the pastor said, well, how'd you like our service? Said, well, we heard y'all had a lot of excitement over here, but y'all are deader than our church is. <laughs> I ain't a gonna water down the word, prayer, Holy Spirit, miracles, healings, casting out demons, any of that, to make religious people feel good. I'm extremely bold. I'm out here with deep woods off, mosquito spray on my legs. I got flip-flops on, got my swimsuit on, because I'm headed to the gym as soon as I film this one, and get in a hot and cold tub, and then I'm going to do yoga, and then I'm come back and work for an hour, and I'm going to go take my little mini vacation and go see a movie. Good, good movie. But anyway... Listen to me real strong. I'm invading your home, your car, your deer stand, wherever you're watching this. Because we're on, we're on the internet and you can sit in your deer stand, your box stand, and look at me on your smartphone. But wherever you are listening, number one, Jesus loves you just like you are. Oh, I can't believe that. Well, you need to start believing it. I don't care if you murdered people. I mean, I care, but but I'm, what I mean is is that he loves you anyway. I, I love what Petra, the their believer rock group. In fact, I got to lay hands on most of them and minister to them one time at home. <clears throat> he said, you may have gone 10,000 steps away, but it's only one step back. And I'm here to talk to you about that. You know, uh, I know a lot of people that, you know, when you have a service and it's time for the altar call, people are getting saved. Most people go, oh, I can't wait because we got to go eat. And they ain't interceding. They ain't believing for them. But people are getting saved anyway. And I know I've had people say I've run into them and they, they're all under pressure because they think I'm going to try to witness to them. And they go, I mean, of course, my nickname growing up was Dub. I've had people say, Dub, I'm already saved. And I said, well, you know. Really, that's kind of a sorry attitude, to be blunt, because if you're already saved, you ought to receive the motivation to go get somebody else saved. You say, well, that's for evangelists. That ain't, oh, that's just a bunch of BS is what that is. The the movie Robin Hood, starring Kevin Costner and Morgan Freeman, you know, Morgan Freeman, he's the only black guy in the movie, and he's, he's from Muslim in, in, the, in the movie. And then he go, you know, Robin Hood helped save his life. So he's, you know, he's out of duty bound by honor to go with Robin Hood, Kevin Costner, and help him. And and so they they free all these white folks that the sheriff of Nottingham has got under bondage and everything. And and they all run into their freedom. And Morgan Fre Freeman, I, I love Morgan Freeman. He's a Mississippi guy, and uh, went to Ole Miss if I got it right. And Morgan is standing on the the little the, the, the wall of the, the the fortress or garrison or whatever you call it, and and he is and he's a black guy here. Help rescue all these white folks, and all these all these white folks are running to their freedom, 
And all of a sudden, Morgan Freedom, Free, Freeman goes, goes, people! And they all stopped. And they looked up at him. He said, you are free. Now help us free these other ones. Whoo! Boy, that was, that was some stout something I just told you right then. And I say to the church, boy, I got chill bump running off all up and down my leg right now. And I say to you, a believer, you are the church. And I say to you, you've been made free by the blood of Jesus. You've been saved by His grace through faith. Help us free these other ones. Help us free these other ones. I start prayer. Well, we pretty much about 422 every morning of the week, Monday through Sunday. I don't take a day off a holiday or anything because I need to rest. I can lay down on a concrete sidewalk and go to sleep for 30 minutes and give me a power nap. I used to do it years ago, working construction. We built burger joints and service stations. Listen to me real strong. We prayed 11.30 to 1 o'clock, midday, Monday through Friday. And I pray with my pastor and his bunch. And, of course, he, my pastor prays with us in the morning sometimes. He prays with us almost every day at noon. And I pray with him at 6 o'clock in the evening. We do a lot of praying. But in the midst of it, I fix me three eggs, some bacon, and sit there and during prayer. And I'll, every now and if I'm crunching too loud, I hit the mute button while I'm praying. Because you, you got to eat. And then you got to go to the store and buy groceries. And we pray. During, we still live life. I got the grandkids. The other day I had prayer going on. And grandkids, my grandson caught a two pound, a three pound, a four pound, a five pound, and a six pound. Back. On that six pound, he's going boo. My arm about to fall off. I said, hold on, baby. And I got the net and got ready. We got that. I mean, we had a, and they were just having a blast. Of course, my granddaughter, you know, my grandson's a couple of years older than her. And he said, well, I'm catching this one for Emmy. And it was on her pole. And Emmy said, well, that's my fish. It's my pole. You caught it on. So we just had to say, okay, that's your fish, baby. And, uh, but we don't, you see, that's the reason a lot of people don't pray. They think you just got to stop everything. Spend time with the Lord. That's a bunch of BS. I, I walk around so edified. Oh yeah, if I'm I get up so early in the morning, I can get I can get frustrated and 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 be difficult to deal with when it gets six o'clock in the evening if I ain't had a nap. But I'm gonna tell you something. Life is cake. I've had some of the most awesome miracles happen just recently, and every time I just go, that's prayer. Even something small happens, I go, that's because of prayer. And I'm giving glory to God when I say that. I just shared it last show. I'm not finna get me a horse again. Well, maybe, probably two or three of them get me a horse trailer. I'm going to go to town, ride a horse all day, and hand out flies. I'm going to get permission from somebody to preach in their pasture or in their barn. I'm going to camp out, cook me something over the open fire. Man, I know how to do that. I carried a cross through Mississippi for two and a half years, and I slept in a hammock 99% of the time. To be honest, I thought churches and pastors would just have me in their home all along the road. It happened twice in two and a half years. I don't know why. I, I still don't understand that. Because I was preached at from the time I was a little baby, go win the loss, go win the loss. And I started doing it like, woo who this crazy fella. But I know religion muddies the waters. Brings the clouds in. Brings a bank of fog. You know, you can be riding in the nicest Rolls Royce, brand new, just off the dealership floor. And the other guy can be riding in a Yugo or a beat up old Rambler or something from that's 45, 50, 60 years old. But you get in the fog, you're both having to go real slow. Fog slows things down. Hope you're listening to me. But hanging around Jesus brings light into the situation people say well you know God's mysterious that's so pulled out of context Jesus told stories and parables to the crowds and the disciples behind his behind in the scenes asking questions and Jesus said well it's been granted the privilege has been granted unto you to understand these things and if you hang around Jesus and hunger and thirst and diligently seek his face He'll tell you some things. He's not holding anything back from you. Well, well, the Lord knows my heart. No, that's just some old junk you repeat you heard somebody else say. 
I believe every believer ought to have a daily disciplined prayer life. People say, well, I pray all during the day. Liar, liar, pants on fire. I've known maybe one or two or three that can do that in my lifetime, people that I've met that, that have that kind of prayer life. And I'm telling you, it's, isn't it amazing? <clears throat> The fruit of the Spirit. Everybody says there's nine of them. No, it's not. It's all about, it's the fruit of the Spirit is love. And then it gives the characteristics. And the last one that King James calls it self-control. Boy, I'm, boy, this is really good what I'm about to share. King Jimmy. King James, excuse me, I call it King Jimmy. And I got one. I still use it sometimes. But King Jimmy calls it the, the gift of self-control. But in the Greek, it means spirit strength. You know what happens when you pray in tongues? You say, boy, you have to bring that up. Yeah. If you have a problem with that, then you're not open to the word. I'm just going to be blunt. And you don't have to pray in tongues to go to heaven. You receive Jesus as Lord. You, you confess Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart. He died for you and God raised him from the dead. You go to heaven, whether you ever speak in tongues or not. But while we're here, we can be used of God. To help bring other people in. And the reason I pray in tongues ain't because I'm trying to be a Pentecostal. They won't let me in because I wear too much makeup. My skirt's too short. And I still pick boogers every now and then. <laughs> but I'm a believer. I'm not a Pentecostal. I'm not a Baptist. I'm not a Methodist. I'm not a Presbyterian. I'm not a Catholic. I'm not a Hindu. I'm not a Buddhist. I'm not a Haiti Krishna. I'm a believer. That's what the Bible refers to us as. Christian was a term of ridicule they came up with. It means little Christ. And they did it to mock us back in the day when they were murdering them right and left. It still happens today. There's so much persecution against believers in places all around the world. In China, they throw you in concentration camp, torture you and do all kinds of things. But yet, because of money that comes into this country... There's organization sports that, that just, boy, they just eat up with Chinese money. They don't care that believers are being tortured in that. I know that for a fact. 90 miles from Florida, it's happening in, in Cuba. There's torture goes. Some people say, well, it's open now. Baloney. I dare you to go down there. And When I went into Havana not too long ago, the, the three guys with me were taken in the back and interrogated and threatened for 30 minutes. Now, they didn't mess with me because I was American. Another one guy was from Chile and the other two were from there in Havana. The pastor we preached for had been arrested seven times. And when you're in prison down there, they'll pull your fingernails out, beat you with a whip, and do all kind of stuff to you. And yet people ignorantly in this country think that that country has opened up. It, uh, that, that government down there hates this country. We, uh, uh, but I tell you what, we're going in there. I got a friend out. He's in Bogota, Colombia. They're going into Cuba again, and they're soul winners. They know how to go get them, and I'm grateful. See, we go places. I've been I've been caught smuggling Bibles into the Soviet Union by the Russian soldiers, and one Estonian soldier came up and interrupted them. They were so upset at me, and I had I had music, anointed music in the Russian language. I had I had many books in the Russian language. I had Bibles in the Russian language. A little Methodist girl had a had a box of Bibles, and and she saw the Russian soldiers coming up, and she stuck them under my arm, and she took all running and didn't even come through the immigration there. And this Estonian soldier was going banzai banzai, ban and I thought, what's a Japanese guy doing here? And it, he he must have been an angel. I don't know. And he he told the Russian soldiers to bugger off. And he, I don't know, and he got me right on through with all that stuff I had. And I was like, I was just kind of like in the days going, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. And uh, I got some wild stories. And it's amazing. Uh, I just, if you're religious, you should have done change channels because you're just going to get upset at me. Uh, oh, boy. I got my, my tie on right here. And I got my Sunday go to meeting shoes on my flip flops right here. And that's, I preach barefoot anymore. It's really I don't I hardly go in the, I mean I go to I'll go where Holy Spirit tells me to go. 
But if I get hot, you know you can get hot in a pair of flip-flops. If I get hot in while I'm preaching, I just flip them off and preach barefooted. I mean, Jesus wore flip-flops. His hair, I, I used to get in more trouble. My hair would be down to here. You know, Jesus, if you all see all these pictures of Jesus, he looked like a hippie from Mississippi. And he wore flip-flops. And he didn't wear no stinking tie neither, I think. I've had people say, well, if you don't have a coat and tie on, you, ain't, you can't be anointed. And I think, I think, yeah, last time I was around you, you had on one. I didn't sense any anointing. You was being a religious turd. It's a T-U-R-D. You can Google it, and it'll tell you the definition of what a turd is. It don't smell real good. <laughs> well, you see, we, David, you, you're running off a lot of people that, that, that would normally listen to. I don't want, if, you, if you're a religious turd, I'm glad you're gone. Because you'll just bring doubt and unbelief and water the thing down. We don't need you. We, we're getting results. I wouldn't do this. I'm out here so early. I wouldn't do this. And, and lived on a shoestring budget for all these years. But I'm blessed. I, I, this stuff happened to me. I, I, I just, I've been so blessed. And I live in a camper that's uh, 30, I guess it's about 30 years old. And, and uh, yeah, I'm going to build another house one day, but I'm probably going to build my little barn first and get my horse trailer and, and uh, get one, you know, not too big where I can pull it behind my SUV. It's only got 247,000 miles on it. But boy, it's a great vehicle. I got it in tip-top condition, just like my body. Oh boy, oh boy. I've been eating my, I've been eating the special cereal, you know. It's almost magical. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. The ringtone on my phone when somebody called and my grandkids when we're together, somebody calls. It's the it's the bar scene from Star Wars, the first movie, and it's do 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 do. And we can be walking up in front of the store and somebody will ring, call me, my grandkids and I, we just start dancing right in front of that store. It don't matter where we are, we just go to dance and don't care. My grandkids will sing and dance in front of anybody, anywhere. Cause we just free. I, I mean, why not? You know, there's a song that says, I hope you dance. We dancing. <laughs> in other words, give faith a chance. Don't follow the herd. I know it scared the hell out of me to start on this journey. To going after people. I thought if I could lead one person to Jesus, I could die and go to heaven. Well, there's been a bunch of them in all these years, all over the earth. And uh, when I when I got in the Soviet Union that time, we went all the way from Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia all the way. And we got into uh, Moscow, and then we flew all the way into Siberia. And we are in Siberia, and the, it's what they told me. Now, I'm just going by what they told me. The number one rock singing group. Like the Rolling Stones are so popular all over the world. Well, the, the number one singing rock group in the Soviet Union was in the same hotel with us. And I didn't even ask the team what you think about it. I was with 11 other guys. And uh, one of them was an instructor at school I went to, Kenneth Hagin School. Great guy. Um, I, I'll call his name in a minute. I'll think about it. But I got, I got this girl. They could speak English and Russian, and I found out what room they're in. Back then, you could do that. I knocked on the door, and they let me in, and here's this rock group. in their tidy whities and smoking that mirrored you want her. You say, well, a minister of the Lord should not go in a room where they're smoking marijuana. Well, I walked right up in the midst of them. And they all just are drinking and, you know, all kind of party spirit and everything. And I walked in there and I gave them Hosanna Integrity Worship Music in the Russian languages, cassette tapes. Gave them information and Bibles in the Russian language and I broke the bread of life to them. I didn't even think, I didn't even have to think about it. I found, I found me an interpreter. I just asked around and I found somebody that could speak English and Russian and asked, would you please go with me? And we went and knocked on the door and went in their motel, hotel room. And there's marijuana smoke in there. And, you know, I call them those left-handed cigarettes. You say, well, I would never do that. I would never do that. Well, you know, and I've had pastors say, oh, I could never do that. Well, I said, well, quit telling your people to be like Jesus. Because you're scared to be like Jesus. Because that's what Jesus would do. You say, David. And see, I know if you ask us, David, David, was you sniffing some of that, breathing some of that marijuana smoke? Well, well, I was breathing one. I mean, I mean, good Lord, don't be religious. What do you think? It couldn't help but. But I'm going to tell you something. 
the anointing is on me. Oh boy, I, I get to telling my story. It's probably the most anointed thing I do. I was on the bus coming into Moscow. I was going from, I guess, from the airport. There's so much stuff. And we're coming over the hill. And the Lord said, the Holy Spirit said, go give the bus driver one of these tapes in the Russian language. And it was the Hosanna Integrity music. And it was that song, give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks. And it was in the Russian language. And, 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 Lord, and I walked up there and, and the Holy Spirit said, tell him this. And the guy could speak English. I said, I'll give you this cassette tape, this wonderful music. To, but if you'll promise me, you'll wear it out playing on this city bus here in, here in Moscow. And he said, I'll do it. And as I went back to my seat, he had plugged it in, and I could hear that song. Give thanks with a grateful heart in the Russian language. Whew, I'm about to cry. Just have to forget. I got chill bumps all over my body right now. And I looked, and there was, and in most, everywhere you went, there was so much depression on the Russians' faces, faces and tears all over that bus. You could just see people, their eyes got watery, and some had tears listening to anointed music in the Russian language on a city bus and we're going over a hill and the sun's coming up it's daylight and the sun's coming up and you could hear give thanks with a grateful heart or it's important that you're grateful for what Jesus did and I know I've shared you if you watch every show you've heard me repeat stuff and repeat stuff I don't care faith cometh by hearing not just having heard it comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. I'm fine with the repetition. Whew. And I don't care about my reputation as long as I got some repetition. Glory. You know, I had to leave so I could come back. And I fixed to leave here in just a minute so I can come back and wrap up this show. You know, a lot of people criticize me and say, Well, David, you could do this and you could do that. No, I ain't after you. You you know, you, know, you, you want to argue and... We want everything perfect. That ain't just ain't, that ain't how I operate. I keep life simple. And I have fun. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Now say this after me. Say, Jesus is Lord. Say it out loud. And if you got to go outside, or, hey, y'all excuse me, I got to go, or, or you have to kind of go later on in the bathroom or somewhere and lock the door or whatever. Go out in the yard and say, Jesus is Lord. Say, I choose to believe that Jesus, you died for me. And God, Father God, I believe you raised Jesus from the dead for me. I believe, I receive, and you're mine. You do that. You're born again. You say, well, I still have feelings. Yeah, me too. I have all kinds of feelings. Say, Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. All right. Love you. I'm going to leave so I can come back. Back again. Just to wrap this up. I have people I I, I know they they can't they they can't stand Billy Graham or they can't stand this one or they can't stand that one. And they tell me things that I need to be doing, but I watch them and they go to church. They give money to the church. Some of them are just as religious about tithing to their local church. And the church sit, sitting on buku of money in the bank. But they never talk about ministering to other people and leading people to Jesus. And, and you cannot take it out of your Bible. It says, And God gave gifts unto men, women, boys, and girls. Ephesians 4.11 Apostles prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists. This is the one who represents the evangelists. We deal with hell more than anybody else because we go out the furthest. And don't tell me how great your church is if there's no prayer going on. If people aren't getting saved, you say, well, well they just won't come to our church. Well, you don't know how to fish. Or you're too lazy or scared to go fishing. Well, I've been, I've done at least 500 seminars. You said, boy, that's a lot of numbers. Well, 42 years. I've done a many of them. I've spoke thousands of times over the years. And I've spoken to one many a time. I've spoken to 12. 
I've spoken to 2,500. I've spoken to 3,000. I've spoken to bigger, big crowds. And I've spoken to very small crowds. But I'm always speaking to one. Even if it, when there was, when I, I spoke in Brazil and there was about 3,000 in there. So they said, I don't know. I didn't count them. And none of them, every one of them mentioned, you know, receiving Jesus. And they couldn't get anybody to respond. And I took the interpreter and made her stand in a chair right beside me. And I went in the back of the crowd and had the altar call in the back. And we stood in, on chairs. And I shared Jesus. And a hundred people got born again. He said, wow, 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 wow. We ain't into numbers. Oh, shut up. Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1 and 2. Chapter 1 and 2. Holy Spirit talked about the numbers. And I know you can be in a ditch with that. I know people that they 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 mess with the numbers so they can be the have the most people. Hey, I want to throw this little episode in on how to partner and help this ministry out. The word partner is one who takes part with another to do something. And I know a bunch of you wanna take part with me to help me do something. What are we doing? We're doing discipling and evangelism. We're doing discipling, especially through prayer, 4.30 every morning of the week till for about an hour to an hour and a half. Monday through Friday, 11.30 to 1 p.m. We have, we have a bunch of folks praying daily. And the best way to disciple is somebody is through prayer and teaching of the Word and equipping. And another thing we're doing is evangel- evangelizing, just like through this show, and we're reaching people one-on-one and through meetings. And there's a lot of fruit. And we're having a whole lot of fun. I want to read you a scripture. Remember, a stingy planter gets a stingy crop. A lavish planter gets a lavish crop. I want each of you to take plenty of time to think it over and make up your own mind. This is a scripture. What you will give. That will protect you against sob stories. And I just don't know we're going to make it if you don't help us. I'm in my 42nd year. And uh, I ain't had to beg and I ain't had to sob for your money. This will protect you against sob stories and arm twisting. God loves it when the giver delights in the giving. Tell you a real quick story about a young man that came to us, started praying with us. He was scared to get a job because he'd get around the crew again and get back on drugs. He temporarily went back on drugs, came off, and he will tell you the thing that has helped him more than anything else. He prays with us daily. He became a youth pastor. The, the, the Great fruit. And he's been off of drugs. And he'll tell you the best thing that ever helped him was daily prayer, daily in the Word with us, and in growing with a group that loves him. So that's just one of the stories, some of the fruit. There's many more, and we'll share others. Thank you for helping. I know you want to. It's High Noon with David. He's gone and fallen in love with Jesus and bringing boldness to the body of Christ. Here's David.